Okay, so let's start to make the scene look a little bit more interesting by adding some animated objects. Levels always look a lot more fun if they've got things of that nature. So what I'm going to do is I'm just using an asset pack provided by Quaternius, uh, which is just an animated, animated animals. But, you know, you guys should be making your own. So, but we can test this. You know, it's always good with a placeholder. So I've just gone through and I've downloaded the alpaca. And this has come through as an FBX. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag and drop this into my meshes folder. Now, we don't really need to change much of anything, but just make sure you have import animations ticked. This is going to come through with its own skeleton, so we're going to leave that blank. And we can go ahead and press import all. Ooh, it's got a whole lot of animations. Now, we can view these by sort of double clicking them. And then that's going to pop up another window. And we can check them out. Or which one? So you can sort of play with these a bit more if you want to. Um, but I'm just going to look for the walking one. So headbutt, kick, death, eating. All good options. Galloping. Galloping will probably do it. Let's have a look at galloping. It's probably a bit faster. Is there a slower one? Hit bow, hit react. Right. Walk. Here we go. Yeah. There we go. That's more of what we're going to want to see. So now I've found this walk animation. I'm just going to move that window out of the way. Um, I'm just going to simply drag and drop it in my scene. Check the scale. The scale is bloody huge. So... In terms of the rotors, I'm just going to sort of like loosely half it for now. And similar to like in Mario Kart, you know, that level with the cows. Let's just have this guy crossing the road and then sort of coming back on himself. Easiest way to do that is with a cinematic. So in my folder, I'm actually going to create a new folder real quick and call this cinematics because we'll probably end up using a few of them. And I'm just going to add a quick level sequence. And save it to my cinematics folder, which I'll call it Alpaca Cine. This is going to pop up this new window. Now, click your alpaca or your animal, and we can right click and say Add Act Sequence, and we'll see it at the top here. Now, we're going to we see we've got this transformation option. Um, I'm just going to click this sort of walk part, and I'm going to copy that first keyframe and. Again, you can sort of tweak and change this. You can increase like the length of this. Um, but just for the sake of this, I'm going to leave it 120 frames. So if we do sort of a full walk, I'm going to just drag him where we'll be, where it'll be at the completion. Um, like around sort of here. And then to click this button to add another keyframe. Click it. And add another keyframe. And if you sort of scrub through, you should see he'll he'll walk across. He starts rotating way too early, so I'm just gonna add move this through. And remember every time you sort of move it to um add that keyframe in, and we can you know we can sort of tweak it and move it, and I'm not gonna do too much here just because this is it for demonstration. So he's gonna walk go around here. Over this point, he's going to sort of come around a little bit more. Maybe over here and rotate a touch. So now we can sort of see him walk on his path. He's going to come back across. Make sure we have him sort of in the right spot and rotating the way he should be going. Um, and then... He spins the wrong direction. So I'm actually just going to go into the rotation here. And instead of it being 160, I think if I set that to minus 160. Yeah. It doesn't sort of spin weirdly. Um, but we'll also sort of drag him over here a little bit. Add that transformation. So it feels like it's more of a, a natural walk. And you're probably just going to want to sort of tweak this and review this a little bit as you're going. But for the sake of test, 
that'll be it. Uh, so I'm just going to hit save. Close you. You can find it in your hierarchy, or if you see the little clapperboard in your level, let's turn this on to autoplay. Um, and we might want to sort of mess with this a little bit more, but make sure we've got loop indefinitely on. And let's just press simulate. Obviously, the the walk's a bit rough and everything, um, and it's super fast. But we can tweak all these, so I'm actually going to set the play rate down to like, I don't know, 0 0.5. And then, you know, the walk feels a little bit better. It's still, like, really fast. The rotation's dodgy and all of it. But you just, you know, you can just tweak all those values just to get that right. So, you know, just spend a little bit more time really, you know, getting those, like, rotations right and everything. But that'll sort of do for that. I'll, you know, you can spend that time refining that. And then, obviously, in-game, we can sort of see it. Our pack is still a bit huge. Um, because we've already sort of put it in our level and we've got transform keyframes. Um, we will have to change it in the cinematic now. So you, you could scale it down in your level, for example, but then as soon as you press play, it'll go back to its old scale. So, because we've got the scale here. Um, so I'm actually just going to delete all these scales. And then on this one, um, let's actually say down to like... Again, instead of it being 0 0.5, let's just say like 0 0.32 or whatever it would be. There you go. Um, and that's the gist for that. Let's see if we've got... Um, so we could add a couple of our packers to our level. Maybe we'll add some grazing over in the background. Again, so that's the complicated one, but we brought in a bunch of meshes. And like I said, there's some that was like eating... Jump into... Head low. So again, we can just add a couple of these maybe over here. And remember, you can edit all of the details about it. So like say, is it looping? Um, you can also tweak the animation itself by double clicking it. And that'll open it up in a separate viewer, in a separate window. And in here, you can change the play speed. So um, like you can actually have a look through like all of these um settings and you can change a bunch of them if you feel like you need to but again we can have like a f to focus we're gonna have like a couple of little ones so sort of chilling out like that one's just sort of like island around maybe we'll add a like say a couple of eating ones and stuff so we'll just populate the scene a little bit with our animals um probably should have created a separate folder for animated animals um like we could create a new folder for say like scenery um yeah so scenery it's nice to keep your work organized another thing we could do is let's add this i've got this wind turbine here so i'm just going to same as before should be fine okay uh it's worth noting um Again, you might have this issue depending on how you've made your models. If it bothers you, um, you can, when you're importing, just make sure you select the drop down to combine meshes. So I'm just going to quickly delete you, that's fine. And then re import it with combine meshes on. So I'll just drag and drop it again. And then. Um, you know what? I don't think you can actually combine meshes if uh, if you've got an animated model. But no, if you've not got an animated model, you'd see a little option there to combine them. Um, so here we've got a, a wind turbine and we've got like the assets and one of these will be the rotation amount. So what I'm actually going to do with this is just create a quick blueprint class type actor. Then T and it's got BP. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is just then it'll be it'll make it a lot easier for me to sort of drag and drop these rather than having to take the different parts through. So we're just going to need a, a base and a top. Now, why don't you drag and drop? Okay, let's just do a base first. Okay, why won't you accept this? Is 
is it, because we need a skeletal mesh. I think we need to, maybe we need to try the skeletal mesh first. And then we can change it to use an animation asset. Now that's the base that's not going to do anything. It'd be the tip, which would need the user an asset. And then that will set to you. Let's input it here. Bloody teeny tiny. Let's increase the scale to five. Or is it tiny? No, it's bloody massive. I thought it was tiny, but it's not, it's massive. Cool, so as you can see here, we've got the um, the turbine. This was animated separately in your 3D editing software, but you could have also taken this propeller, brought it in separately, and animated it with in Unreal, um, which I might potentially show you soon. But for now, that'll sort of do. So we can, now we've got this blueprint, again, depending on size, we might want to bring it down. We do want to bring it down. So I'm just gonna get you, instead of mute one, let's try 0 0.5. Yeah, it's probably better. better. So now we can throw a couple of these around as well and flesh out our scene a bit more. So to duplicate, hold Alt as you drag off. And then let's, we'll just give the shaders a second to compile and then we'll see how that looks.